Hello and welcome to the first Feathers and Fangs Creature Feature, a weekly series in which I talk about some of the amazing animals that we share this planet with. Seeing as how this is the 4th of July, what better way to start off this series than by talking about some all-American animals? And there's no better way to start our list than with the penultimate American animal, the bald eagle. Majestic, wild, and free, the bald eagle is a symbol of America itself. But it wasn't always this way. Did you know there were members of the Continental Congress? mainly Benjamin Franklin, that did not think that the eagle was a suitable mascot for the United States. Instead of the eagle, Ben Franklin wanted an animal he thought more suitable to the role of an American mascot, the turkey. Yes, the majestic turkey. Luckily for the eagle, and I guess unluckily for the turkey, the eagle stuck as our national mascot and is the symbol of freedom that we have today. Now for some fun facts about the bald eagle. Did you know that their diets consist mostly of fish? While they will prey on rabbits, other rodents, small mammals, even baby deer, fish make up about 60% of every eagle's diet. Now because of this, eagle pairs will always build their nests near bodies of water, rivers, lakes, oceans, what have you. Speaking of nests, eagles will come to the same nests year after year to raise their chicks, and they will add to it each year as they see necessary, making repairs, adding stability to the structure. Some nests can even reach a thousand pounds in weight. That's a big nest. Eagles also have some of the best eyesight in the animal kingdom. Not only can they see for miles on end, their eyes can also compensate for image refraction when looking in the water. But the bald eagle is not the only symbol of America as far as animals go. In fact, recently, the American bison was named by President Obama, our national mammal. Bison have been of major importance in American history for thousands of years. Many Native American tribes depended almost solely on the bison for food, for leather goods, for bones to make tools, and other decorations out of. Bison once roamed in herds numbering in the millions, but they were wiped nearly to the point of extinction by the late 1800s. But thanks to conservation efforts, the bison have increased in numbers, although many bison alive now have interbred with domestic cattle, so their genes are not 100% pure. One of the only areas that you can find genetically pure bison is in Yellowstone National Park. Another large mammal that calls Yellowstone National Park home is the grizzly bear. The grizzly bear is one of the largest bear species in the entire world, but did you know that their diet consists almost primarily of fruit and vegetable matter. That's right, bears are far more content to graze on grasses and berries and roots than they are to actually go hunt fast-moving animals. Now that's not to say the grizzly bear is slow. They can run in short intervals of up to 30 miles per hour. That's almost as fast as a horse. One time when the grizzly bear does consume a high amount of animal protein is during salmon runs. That's when they put on a bulk of their weight that is needed for hibernation. Another way that grizzly bears get protein in their diet is by eating insects. In fact, in Yellowstone National Park, bears have been observed climbing into the mountains to find where huge colonies of moths have gone up to escape the heat from the valley below. And they will sit there and they will just lap up thousands of moths in a sitting, gaining precious protein, fat, and carbohydrates. And with all that extra weight put on for hibernation, the grizzly bear will sleep through the entire winter cycle, not waking to eat, to drink, to go to the bathroom. The only function that will happen with a grizzly bear is a mother grizzly will give birth to her cubs. Horses are another animal that is oftentimes associated with American history. No other horse perhaps is more recognized than America's wild horse, the Mustang. Mustangs are the descendants of horses brought here by Spanish conquistadors during the 15th and 16th centuries. The word Mustang comes from the Spanish word Mustaño, which means unclaimed beast or stray horse. Many of these horses do not stay stray for long, however, as Native American tribesmen learned how to tame and ride these magnificent creatures. Early Western pioneers also liked the Mustang because of its speed, its stamina, and its stocky build, which made it less susceptible to injury. Mustangs still roam wild in the American West in protected herds managed by the Bureau of Land Management. Mustang herds are closely monitored in the wild because they do not want the horses to use up all the resources available, which would lead to them starving or dying of thirst or just plain running out of room. Whenever certain populations of Mustangs grow too large, the government will round up sections of herds of Mustangs and instead of destroying them, they will offer them for adoption through various agencies. So if you're ever interested, you can own your own living piece of American history by adopting a wild Mustang. Now I've talked a lot about the 
big guys when it comes to American animals, but the last one I want to mention is a little bit on the smaller side. It's the prairie dog. Prairie dogs are considered a keystone species in that they are partially responsible for the health of the prairie habitats that they call home. Prairie dogs live in large underground societies that are often referred to as prairie dog town. And because the prairie dogs are constantly digging in the soil, they are aerating it as they make their homes. Prairie dogs are also responsible for helping to transfer nutrients back into the soil by means of waste and uneaten food that they store underground. So in part, prairie dogs are responsible for the diets of the herds of bison and mustangs and to a certain extent, they're responsible for the diets of eagles and grizzly bears. Their tunnels will also act as surrogate homes for other animals that don't necessarily want to dig their own burrow, including rattlesnakes, badgers, groundhogs, even burrowing owls. But prairie dogs are not just colossal tunnel builders, they are also one of the most talkative animals in the animal kingdom. In fact, some scientists estimate that they have a more complex communication system than chimpanzees and dolphins. In a short series of barks, a prairie dog lookout can tell the rest of its colony what type of predator is coming towards it, what color it is, what direction it's coming from, even how fast it's moving. Prairie dogs even have a distinct call from when they see a human hunter approaching with a gun. That is amazing. Now I know there were hundreds of other animals that I could have talked about, but unfortunately, I just don't have the kind of time to do it. What do you think? Are there animals that should have been on this list that weren't? Go ahead and leave a comment down below and tell me what you think. If you like the video, go ahead and give us a like, and you can subscribe by clicking right here. And thank you for joining me on the Furs, Feathers, and Fangs Creature Feature.